It's good news and bad news when it comes to the Rwanda plan. So the Court of Appeal has ruled that the deportation flight scheduled to take place tomorrow can go ahead. Woohoo, OK, that sounds brilliant. It sounds like a great decision. But actually, it's a bit pathetic. Something like 37 people were supposed to be on that flight. Now, that's down to just eight people. And you know what's going to happen, don't you? You can see it coming an absolute country mile off. All these groups like Amnesty International, Care for Calais, they're going to turn up to the runway, chain themselves to the wheels. We've had it all before, haven't we? We've had it all before where these kind of groups have stopped deportation flights and then subsequently found out that the people on those flights were murderers or rapists, for example. Now, of course, they'd be more than happy for those people to live next door to you, but they probably wouldn't want them sharing a spare room in their own house, would they? We have a democratically elected government with a massive majority, a majority Brexit-backing nation, where, apart from the great unwashed blue hair brigade in Peckham or the bleeding-heart faux liberals of Hampstead, they would all like something done about illegal immigration. <clears throat> Excuse me. They, during a cost-of-living crisis, don't want to have to pay even more tax to house millions of illegal immigrants. Many of them, I imagine, are treated a lot better than some people who've been born and raised here in this country. I actually wonder whether or not some people living in abject poverty in squalid, mould-infested council flats in this country would rather be given the option to actually go to Rwanda, for goodness sake. New footage of the accommodation there shows it's got Arabic signage, a table of amenities in the bedroom, so it looks better than my washroom, all double rooms, a prayer room, halal food. I mean, goodness me, if I was fleeing war or torture, I'd kill for something like that, for want of a better phrase. I think the majority of the media outlets are giving too much airtime to a very loud fringe minority of people. It's mob rule. It's weak policing. We had a situation in Scotland where those due for deportation were released because hundreds of people came out to protest. Something similar has just happened in Peckham. Check this video out. The police had just let someone scheduled for deportation go, essentially, and this was the public's reaction. Shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Yeah, well, there we go. I mean, you can hear them hissing, can't you? You can hear them being called scum. But obviously, we naturally gave into them. We saw mob rule Please. outside so Cine World Cinemas. You can see it there. You can hear it now in the background if you're on radio. Cine World Cinemas, where a group of angry male Muslim protesters managed to get a film they didn't like cancelled. We saw outside Batley Grammar School, again, a group of angry male Muslim protesters managed to get a teacher out of a job. As far as I'm aware, he's still in police custody, by the way. Sorry, police protection, I should say. Now, it took us too long to get to grips with Insulate Britain, or Insulate Prison, as I like to call them now, because that's where most of them certainly should be. People were left with life-changing injuries as a result of what they were doing. And now we've got a country that is desperate to get to grips with illegal immigration. But a few people from Islington think this is a terrible idea, so we don't do it. Both the media and people's idiocy is to blame for this. Pretty much every single other media outlet takes a blanket view on asylum seekers or illegal immigrants, that they're all desperate and vulnerable people. But that simply isn't true. The vast majority, in my opinion, are economic migrants, and that should change the narrative on this. That changes everything. If someone knocked on your front door now and asked to come in, but refused to tell you who they were, where they were from, or what their intentions are, you wouldn't let them in, would you? In fact, you'd probably ask them to leave. So what's wrong with our government trying to do exactly the same thing?